Well, I suppose the first thing I want to say um, this morning is that there is a lot of advice available for a lot of different people in relation to COVID-19 and I'd be encouraging people to access that advice. So obviously from a health perspective, it's really good information available on hse.ie about some basic things we can all do uh, to reduce the spread uh, of COVID-19 in Ireland. Some very good advice for Irish people in relation to travel available on the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trades website and that's updated on an ongoing basis. So again, I'd be encouraging people to check that out in terms of before they travel. There's also some very good inf information available on the Department of Business's website in terms of what businesses should do to prepare in their own workplace uh, for the reality that people may develop uh, COVID-19 in the workplace and, and how to prepare uh, the environment for that as well. So I think it is important for people to know there's a lot of information out there. Take the time to familiarise yourself with that. The second thing I want to say is I'm obviously aware that there have now been four more confirmed cases, confirmed as of last night, uh, by the Chief Medical Officer of COVID-19 uh, in the Republic of Ireland. And we've also seen some new cases in Ireland, so nine cases on the island of Ireland. In relation to the four cases, um, contact tracing is underway. This is the process whereby our public health doctors sit down with the patients involved and trace their, trace their movements and work out who needs to be contacted who may have been in close contact with that patient. That is underway. I am aware that is going to impact on a number of schools and it's important to say that those schools need to follow the advice uh, of the public health authorities. There may be different scenarios for different schools and this may happen a number of times in the coming days and weeks. For some schools it may mean a school closure, for other schools it may mean that a class closes, for other schools it may mean that an event within a school community is cancelled. So it's really important that schools do not act unilaterally that schools take the opportunity to hear from the public health authorities. The Chief Medical Officer, I think, has written to schools on three occasions so far and will continue to provide up-to-date information. But that contact tracing in relation to these four new cases is ongoing. And I think the media are doing a really good job of getting accurate information out to people. I think it's important that you get a chance to get an update on that contact tracing uh, process from the Chief Medical Officer at what is now the daily, uh, the daily press conference. Just two other points I want to make. We've now convened a stakeholder forum uh, for tomorrow at three o'clock. You'll know we've established a stakeholder forum to bring together civic society, business groups, voluntary organisations, unions, lots of different people in society to update them uh, on COVID-19 and also to give them an opportunity to input into the preparedness process. At that meeting tomorrow, they will be briefed on the guidelines uh, for mass gatherings for large events uh, and those guidelines will then be published. So this will be an opportunity for them and many of these would be people who could well be involved in organising events uh, to see those guidelines before they're published and indeed to give their views uh, on that. And the final point, I'm conscious I'm at an event with CF Ireland this morning and I'm conscious that uh, people and parents in particular of children who might already have an underlying health condition are particularly concerned and we all get we all get that um, on an individual on an individual basis so tomorrow my department at a clinical level will meet with patient advocacy groups and work with them to make sure we can provide the best possible information of perhaps the extra steps of preparedness uh, that vulnerable people and patients uh, may or may need to take so you mentioned a number of schools have been impacted by these new cases in the West. Uh, how many are you aware of so far that have been impacted? So this is a dynamic and ongoing situation. I'm very conscious of not saying something now um, that could end up being different uh, in a few short hours. So as of now, the contact tracing is underway. Uh, in the west uh, of our country. The Chief Medical Officer will update on that later. And just, just to say, from your own planning point of view, this is the way I intend to deal with this. Um, that I'll obviously comment on issues um, and answer your questions, but I'll actually be referring people to that daily press conference where there's an opportunity uh, for people to get the most up-to-date information. What we don't need uh, is partial information, and what we don't need is uh, wrong information to be given out accidentally. So there will be a number of schools, and I suppose I would emphasise the point I just made a moment ago, that for some schools that might involve closure, for other schools it may not. So there will not be a one-size-fits-all solution for all schools as this situation unfolds. Minister, can I ask you, um, as, as the Health Minister, how concerning are you now that we have nine cases on the island? I know the um, head of the HSC, Paul Reid, has also expressed concerns about how hospitals will cope with this going forward. And, you know, Tony Holden has said himself he expects to see far more ca cases. How concerning um, is that? Well, look, I think everybody is concerned because of the uncertainty with this virus. Uh, I'll travel to Brussels uh, again early in the morning uh, to meet with health ministers, the European Commission and the World Health Organization in relation to the collaboration that's happening at a European and a, at a global level in relation to this virus. This is a virus that's only known to doctors for weeks, so we're still learning an awful lot about it. Even the best brains in the world, the best medical experts are still learning 
learning on a daily basis new things about the evolution of this virus. And I suppose that uncertainty uh, causes all of us on a human level concern. But I have been saying, and I'm going to continue to say, uh, there is no room for complacency, nor is there any room for panic. Um, this is a virus, let's remember, 80% of people who get this virus will never require hospitalisation based on the current trends that we're seeing um, as well. So it's important we're vigilant. The public have a major role to play in this and I want to thank people for playing that by following public health advice. Uh, better hand hygiene, we were all talking about you know, singing happy birthday twice in, 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 in your head is roughly how long you should wash your hands for. Uh, the fact that water and soap is as good as hand sanitizer. you don't need hand sanitizer if you can access that. Uh, the fact that there should be good cough etiquette, cough into your elbow and not into your hand as opposed to tissue straight after. These are basic things that can make a real difference when you're trying to reduce the spread uh, the spread of a virus. So we remain extremely vigilant in this regard. In relation to our situation regarding isolation facilities and ICU facilities, the HSE is identifying as we speak additional uh, beds that can be provided and I've already said to Paul Reid and, and he knows this, uh, funding will be forthcoming for that but, uh, but I do need people to be clear here, not everybody who gets this will require hospitalisation, the overwhelming majority will not and even those who require hospitalisation, the majority of them will not require an ICU bed so I, I don't want people to be unduly concerned about this. For many people, particularly those of us who are generally healthy and well, um, this will be, you know, getting a virus can be an unpleasant experience, it can require you staying at home and being self-isolated. Um, um, but m but most people will recover very well from this. You Minister, just about on sorry on the schools, just to you mentioned possible closures. Are you aware of actual new closures in the West related to these new cases? I am, but I'm aware that I'm aware that a number of schools are taking those decisions at the moment as they're speaking to our public health authorities. I'm also aware um, that again there may be different scenarios for different schools. And I think it's really important. This is likely a conversation we're going to be having on a regular basis. It's likely we'll see many more cases, and therefore it's likely we'll see more, more schools impacted or workplaces or, or lots of different scenarios. It's important when that happens that we all have a clear understanding of what the protocol is. And I think the protocol is clear. Uh, the public health authorities will contact you. You don't need to contact them. And they will advise you on what you should do. They will carry out a risk assessment, in this case in your school, and they'll advise you what is appropriate. And then we will have our top doctor, the chief medical officer, available. Um, to update the public uh, through the media uh, every evening on the state of play in that, in that day in terms of any new cases or new developments and what we can tell about the contact tracing process without, without obviously interfering in any way with patient confidentiality. So where there's a case in Ireland we'll always confirm uh, the gender, um, we'll confirm uh, the fact that they, the region the person is from, um, whether it's an imported case, and all of our cases so far have been imported, and that the contact tracing process is, is ongoing. Are you worried about some of the reporting? About the, the, the four Sorry. cases um, confirmed last night, the family members, um, and there was talk during the week that it's important that these are imported cases. Can you confirm then that those four patients were all imported and that it wasn't localised infection between? one person and the family member. So my medical advisors tell me that there's no case of community transmission in Ireland. So you obviously have, as you say, two ways, I suppose, of, of seeing the COVID-19 spread, at least two. Uh, one is that someone was abroad in an infected, an infected area, we know in this case it was Northern Italy, and you pick up the virus in that area, you come back into your own country, uh, and the virus presents itself after a period of time. The second, which we have not seen any evidence of in the Republic of Ireland, nor on the island of Ireland, is whereby you haven't been to Northern Italy and you end up and uh, you end up with the virus and that would be signifying community transmission. That would be a different phase if we saw that on a widespread basis, but we haven't seen any of that in our And secretary. certainly just on the sick pay issue we were asked about yesterday um, on the radio, what sort of measures um, are you looking at at the moment in terms of what uh, legislation to amend um, possibly something similar that the UK did? Well. And perhaps when you're talking about the, the schools issues, obviously parents will be concerned about work. Uh, is there any measures going to be brought in or recommendations to businesses who obviously perhaps at last minute parents might have to stay at home with their children? Yeah, so a couple of things. I mean, we we already have a situation in Ireland where if you are told to stay at home from work for a medical reason, you can access um, financial support through the Department of Social Protection. You are correct that at the moment there has to be a time lag, I think it's six days before you can actually access that. I'm actively working with government colleagues to see if we can remove that and whether legislation is required or not is a matter under consideration. So we have a cabinet committee chaired by the Taoiseach and this is one of the issues uh, that we'll be deciding when we meet uh, on Monday. Um, in relation to parents that stay at home, my, my message here to employers and employees would be 
let's remember they have a long-term interdependent relationship here. So we need people to show flexibility. If you're advised to stay home, employers should look at seeing if you can work from home, many of us can, to see if they can provide you with an opportunity perhaps to take leave um, as well. And if they're not in a position, uh, if they're not in a position to pay, obviously the Department of Social Protection does have a range of income support schemes uh, available for people in different scenarios and lots of information available um, on, the, on their website as well. Can I just ask you about some of the reporting? Tony Holohan yesterday spoke about fear and anxiety and that this leads to um, uh, certain stereotypes. Uh, we've seen reports today about doomsday scenarios. Like obviously, this is, will create a lot of fear among a lot of people, particularly groups like CF, um, people with underlying conditions, and older people. How would your message be around all of that and the, the, some of the hysteria that we're hearing? So, so my message to people here would be that we have the best doctors in the country working on this, and they have really stepped up to the plate. So, over healthcare professionals, uh, I, I mean. Often the Irish Health Service, understandably, comes under a lot of scrutiny and criticism. The leadership we're seeing from people working in the Health Service now is immense. We saw an example of that again yesterday, where you can now see testing for this uh, virus being carried out at home, uh, thanks to an innovation by our National Ambulance Service. This sort of innovation is what makes me proud uh, to be the Health Minister and to work alongside uh, these health leaders. I think it's really important for all of us, as citizens, as parents, um, to get our information uh, from the health service, from our doctors. And I know that in a story which there's so much interest in, I know this is fast evolving, it's a, an issue that's being talked about globally at this stage, it's dominating news bulletins uh, right across the world. I know that there's always a, a rush to want to get information out. Uh, I think it's really important that we don't see a kind of drip feed of partial information, but instead we see all of the public health information that is relevant and that respects patient confidentiality given to the Irish people through the Chief Medical Officer's daily press briefing. I think that's a structure that's worked pretty well. Um, we've announced all of the cases of Ireland in Ireland of COVID-19 through an announcement by the Chief Medical Officer, either in person at a press conference or by a press statement media by and large in Ireland have played a really important role in getting those facts out to people. Social media is a useful tool, we all use it, I use it. Uh, it's not a very reliable um, tool at a time like this to be picking up kind of tidbits or partial information. You, you will be updated uh, by this situation on a daily basis uh, by the Chief Medical Officer and his team and that is the best place to get your information and hse.ie has some really good and practical tips of basic things we can all do uh, to help keep our people in our country safe and well.